they're off. They are off, and uh, Wesley, what's he going to open with? Well, he's sticking to the time-tested King's Pawn, and it's a French defence from Nordebeck. And this is the winnerware variation of the French defence that Nordebeck is playing, named after the player winnerware. And this is a very, very sharp uh, system. Bobby Fischer used to favour this system with the white pieces, and players like Botvinnik used to play this with the black pieces. And here you see a very well-known idea. This pawn move is trying to make way for White's bishop to pop out to the side. But first of all, he has to guard that pawn that the black queen attacked. And uh, this is all theoretical. I've looked at this position myself quite a lot. I haven't seen Nordibek play the French defence before, so a slight surprise there already. Yeah, but these players are so versatile. They can play almost any opening. And uh, we see Nordibek just develop the knights. Also, Wesley does the same in kind. And you can actually track the advantage of the players by looking at the dashboard background there on the right. And if one color dominates, that means that what that side is winning. And whoa, Nordebeck just locking down the center. That means all the tension now has moved to the sides of the board. That pawn chain in the middle, it looks like a staircase there. They're all locked up though, so they lose a lot of their tension. You know, it becomes a static pawn structure. And that's why Wesley is trying to play on the other side of the board. This move gaining space, maybe the rook can come up into the game. And he's also trying to hit on the dart squares. Nordibek stops the advance of that pawn. And Black's strategy here is normally to get the king to the queen side, the left-hand side, and then break with a pawn. On the other hand, Wesley wants to control the position, control the space, and grind away, gr use that space advantage to, to get a notable advantage. Yeah, and uh, well, you called it there, Simon. The king did go to safety on the left side, but White's king also went to the right, which is an interesting decision because I suspected that the king might stay in the middle of the board. But uh, well, Wesley grabbing space, but that's as far as he can go. And uh, well, Nordibek playing a very calm grandmaster move, attacking the king into the corner of the board before he initiates any operations there on the right. And this bishop move, Ivanka, this is actually an idea taken from Bobby Fischer, the great American champion. Bobby Fischer used this same position, bishop maneuvering to get that bishop to a better diagonal. You've got to put your pieces on the best squares you can, especially at this level. You're not going to win quickly. You've got to build up the position. I have to say, Wesley Sow's heart rate is pretty low today, Ivanka. It's normally about 160 by now. He's has he been working out or doing some <laughs> meditation, do we think? Maybe, or maybe he's just really comfortable with this position. He's playing very quickly. He has a time advantage. And, uh, well, he's going to have to use that time because Nordebeck has just broken out into the center. And now with that night jump, ooh, did you just see the evaluation bar just move up? It doesn't quite like it. I wonder whether that's because the uh, that knight can get kick back and Wesley he's a principal player he pushes that knight away this is all pretty normal stuff though so far we saw that little pawn move that black played is aimed at breaking up the center and this rook move is trying to get ready to open a line for that piece towards white's king you've got to try and attack your opponent's king and black is trying to arrange a position where he can just smash open the pawns in the middle of the board and get some counterplay get some attack against the king remember checkmate what does it do Yvanka? it ends the game <laughs> that's the one <laughs> so they've got to get there They've got a long way to go, but that's what they're aiming for. And uh, that bishop, though, diving into a very fearsome position. Uh, and this is why I kind of prefer white in these positions, because of that bishop, generally. Right. I'm actually really loving white's position, because once the bishop steps back, you want to keep that bishop on the board. I mean, white has a choice. You know, you can play on the right side, but you also, if you're feeling quite fruity, you can move the rook to the left side of the board and start attacking the black king. Well, you think uh, I'm always feeling a bit fruity. And that was a fruity move as well from Black. Black's getting ready to open up more lines, right? Mm -hmm. I know. This is a tense. And uh, Wesley taking some precautions, saying he will keep Wesley guessing. 
and they're still just doing a bit of maneuvering around wesley trying to play on both sides of the board he's trying to keep his king as safe as he can you can see his king there moves out of the line of one of the rooks getting ready for when those lines open up and he's basically saying to naughty Beck, he's saying if you open the position i'm actually going to be better on that side of the board because i have more space uh, naughty Beck bringing the queen back to try and get it over to the king side. I mean, the other thing about these positions, I say I do like white, but black always has many attacking chances. And look at the bar now, the evaluation bar. The computer, our, our god of the evaluation, is saying that black is doing well now because maybe it's just white's king is a bit too exposed. White's king is very airy, to say the least. And uh, the first moves that jump out to me is either exchanging pawns in the middle or just pushing forward with the f pawn and uh, naughty Beck instead just moving the queen maybe he's just playing with wesley and just saying hey maybe we repeat the position a few times i think i think he's saying if you go move your rook back let's have a draw get on to the next game and uh, are they going to repeat positions well the black knight goes back the bishop goes back we could see what we call in chess a repetition three times if you get the same position from both sides doing the same moves three times it's declared a draw because neither side is making progress but is this Nordibek who's trying to play for a win he moves his knight out is he going to grab that pawn on the left hand side I think that would be very risky you don't <laughs> want to open up lines towards your king do you I'm a certified pawn grabber and that pawn I would never touch in a million years because you'd just be giving life to that rook in the corner no 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 the action is happening either in the center or the right side of the board and uh, Nordibek Wow, Wesley trading, that's a surprise. I'm really surprised about that decision from Wesley because his bishop was so great. And look at the time situation as well. This is what makes the Armageddon show so exciting. We get time scrambles all every set game pretty much and now the position's really getting tactical the king side the right hand side is opening up i'm starting to like naughty beck's position because wesley's got rid of his best piece the bishop and there are lines opening towards wesley's king yeah and uh, talking about things heating up take a look at wesley's heart rate up to 148 and the position is getting wild it is indeed. Wesley has grabbed the pawn and gone a pawn up. And I love that move, centralizing his queen. But can Nordibek use those rooks to attack on the open lines? Because that would be a key, key idea there. I mean, does he have enough compensation for the pawn? He's got to prove it. I mean, this is the thing with Nordibek. He's such an aggressive player, like a young Gary Kasparov. Sometimes he grabs the pawn he, back here. He does grab the pawn back, but both kings are really airy very weak and decision time for Wesley rooks get traded off and now the rook in the corner has a purpose and all this position is wild it what is indeed do? there's a problem with black's back rank though and look at the time 10 seconds under 10 seconds for naughty Beck he's got to move soon and he does he moves his bishop back to defend his back rank but Wesley grabs a pawn this is looking great for Wesley now he's got the time advantage it's going okay but naughty Beck flies in with a check there it's very complicated still yes yeah, super complicated and just keep an eye on the clock that is going to determine everything and maybe the players are repeating Maybe we're going to see our first draw in the final of Armageddon. No, because Wesley jumps in with the knight and four seconds making space for the king. And it's the age pawn that is running. How can he handle that one? If you get the pawn to the other side of the board, you get your queen back. And this is a deadly threat, but it's on the clock. It's Is that pawn going to queen or is Naughty Beck going to get a big attack? Naughty Beck has to give up a piece for that pawn. It was just too strong. But now the white king, very exposed. Yeah, three, two, whoa. Naughty Beck living there on the edge and the queen returns, gives a check. And Bishop takes knights, just getting rid of the attackers, but allowing a few checks. This White is crazy stuff. 
Absolutely crazy. White is a pawn up, but look at the white king. It's completely naked, and a naked king is not a good look. You need to put some clothes on, white king. You're getting too exposed there, and Naughty Beck is checking that king as much as he can. I expect Wesley, though, is going to play for a win. He's such a brave player. His heart rate up to 173. Can he? Oh, oh my oh, goodness what a move. me. Moving up the board with the king. But that is a risky business, and now the king finds some safe safety there but uh, is the rook going to come in with a check and it's that king it looks so exposed there in the middle of the board but wesley is defending his king with the knight and with his opponent's pawn and naughty beck is still trying to attack but he can't find a way through at the moment Wesley just gaining time on the clock there. Yeah, but uh, it's such a nervy position. Both players repeating moves. Now the rook attacking the queen. Queen is threatening to grab the pawn with check. And uh, suddenly we have a really unusual position where black has a lot of pawns in compensation. Did you see one second left on the clock? Checks. Checks everywhere. And it is two points up for white with the extra knight. Knights and queens work so well together. But can black keep checking? Can black get a draw somehow by repeating, by checking that king? It's going to be tough if Wesley three, can... 2 3 two. Has he lost on no, time? No, he's not. No, sorry. I was reading the... Oh, <laughs> you've got me excited there. <laughs> I'm just looking at the clock. And then, uh, well, now the queen is centralised. The knight is good. Uh, it's and now a final point has been eliminated it's just whether Wesley can hold his nerve and it will be over after all that madness yeah Wesley should be winning this one because that night look how it's working so well with the Queen jumping around using the holes in blacks position and if the Queen's ever come off the end game is going to be winning for white and the Queens are now off that should mean that Wesley takes this first game as long as he doesn't blunder he's a whole piece up the way to win this is to slowly attack your opponent's pawns with your knight and then use one of your pawns to make a queen. And you can see the black pawns are now dropping and hit Naughty Beck does resign. What a great game. Look at the disappointment there, though, on Naughty Beck's face.